All right, here we are to the at the door to the Elliott Historical Society collections room. Side collection room. My name is Julie, and I um, am the collection coordinator. What we're looking at right now is the collection that we have of, of clothing. Uh, these blue boxes that you see here are acid-free boxes. We have um, a lot of historical clothing that is wrapped in acid-free paper, we cleaned as best we can, uh, wrapped and in these boxes to keep things as um, preserved as we can. As you can see, we do have an awful lot of clothing, very jam-packed full. Up above on the shelf here, we have some hat boxes that are full of hats. We do have a lot of hats. Uh, some little houses or models of different areas that Donnie Weber's father had made and we donated uh, being the waste station, Elliot um, waste station, the old fire house, and items like that. Down below here, on these, fi on these files, we have family photos. Uh, I've, spent time working on family photos and to see um, they're full of different photos from families in here uh, documented on so we can find uh, the people easy by just um, going on and finding them. There's more here. We've got a little lady by the name of, oops, I don't know if you can see her, oh, Mrs. Ferguson. Sarah Hobbs Ferguson, right. So we have lots of family photos, the bigger fa family photos down here. Uh, printer, mach printer machine. Our file cabinet has um, items in it that we might need for um, insurance papers, um, minutes from past meetings, um, fundraising ideas in that file cabinet. And this, these file cabinets are, have got a lot of the larger documentation that we have documented starting way back years and years ago. Just different files that, like this particular one here, Just East Elliot Garage on it. Um, that's up in East Elliot Pond on Goodwin Road. It may be just a letter or an article in the paper or some kind of something that they have given us. But we get drawers full of several drawers full of that. As you can see, we have over here. We've got a lot of different tapes and different um, CDs, all cataloged according to what was on those CDs. Um, so, so we have plenty of those. And one of the most important things that we have is the um, survey that was done, um, architectural survey that was done from all the old houses in Elliott, 1992, uh, UNH student did a um, study, and that is really great to have. We have all those, and on this wall here, we have three ring binders with um, different uh, topics, depending on. We got letters in here. We've got chromosomes in here. We've got um, people's uh, 
notebooks that they have given us, just um, all, all sorts of things. Got one here from Roseanne on the post office. A lot of these are Bartlett letters in here. This down here, the, the brown files, the top one is all a bunch of school pictures and school documentations. The bottom one is centennial and bicentennial items that we have. Those are empty boxes at this point. And way up high, those blue boxes that you see all the way across the top are um, sections of the old Elliot sections that we received years ago from it's, it's, um, Dr. Willis's uh, sections that he used to, he made and he put out. And then as we scan across here, more blue boxes, acid-free, filled with artifacts, things that people have given us, uh, and a lot of um, things have been cataloged over on this section. These down, just down below here, we, these are all old newspapers in this box. These boxes here and up above there. We had a whole great big boxes of newspapers that back even before the number eight school was was uh, fixed up and <laughs> spent most of my time just undoing these papers. A lot of them uh, have been eaten, but a lot of them are very old too for us to look at. These two shelves of white shelving that we have here uh, are things that need to be uh, documented. Needs recording. Everything needs recording. So look at that. And uh, we have a, luckily we were able to um, receive some of Ed Vedder's um, work, uh, historical work that he did. Uh, the, he was very organized. He had wonderful information. He wrote several books, the Brickyard books, views, um, different different books on Eliot, and he very um, organized, as you can see, with all the different um, topics on, on his three ring binders. So we were lucky enough to get uh, a lot of these things in this uh, good tool for us when we're looking for things. These both have files, a file cabinet, so full of, of, of other things he gave us, and here's some more of his organization that helps us to find things very quickly and um, it, make, it makes it a lot easier for us than to have to uh, look through a lot of other things. So he was, it was wonderful to be able to have these drawers full of, of documentation. And then this little table here is where it's a workstation. And it's about so what we're going to do now is just go through a few things we have in our collection that might be of interest. Uh, this is a uh, the top of a, what they call the crazy quilt, um, just because I think, really, uh, the name of it, I don't know if it's because just because people took crazy pieces of fabric and stuck them together however they want. The beautiful stitching in between. Um, this quilt, from what we have got for information, was donated to the United Methodist Church by Norma Jean Brennan. And then the church donated to the Historical Society. The date unknown as to when that happened and when this quilt was made is also an unknown date. But we've got some feelers out there um, that um, Roseanne Fisher is, is trying to get more information on this quilt. Um, and hopefully we'll have be able to get that information uh, um, back to the society and able to document all that. The squares were um, made by different ladies, I assume from LA, because I recognize some of the names. So the names um, on this piece of paper indicate the names that we found on each block. Some, obviously, you can see didn't have a name, but they'd be the 
embroidered them on the front, embroidered them on the back of the square, or wrote on the back in pen or pencil their, um, their names. Some of the names are like uh, very familiar names, but once again, we're really interested in finding out a little more about this quilt as far as who were these women? Were they in a church group? Were they just friends? Were, how did they get together and, and, and um, decide to put this together? What year was it done? Um, and how it came to be with us? But if you get, film, the filmer will get closer and show you some names and just the beautiful stitching in between the uh, pieces of fabric, uh, amazing. Beautiful bright colors, which also I think is characteristic of what they call a crazy quilt. Uh, luckily they have held up very, very nicely. Uh, and we are very happy to have it. It is just a front. It hasn't been finished. It's just the front, which gives us an opportunity also to, you know, see how things were put together. Um, a little more. So once we find out more about that, that'd be something that we can document and, and keep in our, um, uh, our, our collection information. So, That's, that's the quilt. So what we have here are three samplers. And the definition of a sampler is a piece of embroidery worked in various stitches as a specimen of skill, typically containing the alphabet and some artwork. Generally, I think most of the time these were done at a young age. Um, just show off their, their skills in, in, as part of, the, of their uh, becoming, you know, young ladies. So this one here, they actually were all um, done by different sisters, the Knight, Knight sisters. This one here is Elizabeth Knight. She was uh, 13 at the time that she did this in 1835. She did the alphabet in a lot of different uh, stitches, ways of stitching it, which is not unusual. Um, and she has a little saying, and then some. usually they do something that's important to them, uh, artist-wise. Then we have, this one's faded a little more. This is Sally Ann Knight that did this one. She also was 13. Um, this was done in... In 1826, so this is an older one, almost 10 years older um, than the previous one. But it's the same idea. You can see the little ladies uh, flying around. The colors have faded quite a bit on this one. But in, in the outside um, is different. And this one here looks very much the same with the same type of out, outside edging. And this is a sister, Carolyn Brun Knight. And she was 10 when she did this, 1826 as well. So yeah, the 13-year-old and the, and, the, and the 10 year old did this, and I would say at the same time. But the, the three um, the three were sisters, they were the daughters of Thomas and Betsy Elizabeth Welch Knight. Um, Sally Ann. Elizabeth and Carolyn um, are buried in the Knight Cemetery, which is off from Bolco Road. It's actually a cemetery that has been discussed um, 
getting work this year uh, on clean up those cemeteries on Hillside Drive. Um, Elizabeth Knight, um, she was born in June 29th in 1822 and she died April 14th, 1843. She was a young lady, 21. Sally Ann, she, um, she died in 1899. She was 85 years old. Apparently she was born in 1814. So she was, she was uh, quite old when she passed. And so did uh, Carolyn Knight. She was um, born in 1816 and passed in 1904. So we're lucky to have these, these, these samplers of their artwork and uh, nicely framed um, to keep in our collection. So what we have here is a, a pair of boots. Uh, they were made in 1865 by Jaffet Emery of Elliott. He, Jaffet was born in 1798 and died in 1874. Um, they are handmade and cut by him in his cobbler shop, which was on Goodwin Road. Um, looking closely at him, you can see the detail underneath and how rigid, rigid the boots were. I can't imagine how people were able to keep those on their feet. They are very, very, very hard. And then, of course, it has a lot to do with the leather being old. But uh, those, were, those were somebody's boots. I don't know whose, but we had that he, they were made by Jaffet Emery. Right there in his cobbler shop, Elliot. So this is a, a, a traveling case that uh, came to us um, from the Winifred Fernal estate. Uh, we uh, had this as long as I, I remember, and we've shown it several times. Once down the Kenny Bunk Savings Bank. Um, I'm going to uh, take a minute and open up, uh, open it up, so you can see how. Uh, they would carry their clothing and items um, and would pull out a couple things and, and let you see what, what they had inside and some of the garments that she would have worn. So what we have here, uh, these came in, in here, a lot of different items came. These are the, some of the clothes that she would have, have worn. Um, the top, this beautiful top with, uh, with all this beautiful embroidery on it. As you can see how small it is. Certainly was a fashionable woman. She um, liked to see if we can get a film on. She's another, another very fashionable piece that she had worn. And this garment, I kind of like to get an idea if we can see how it was how it took to get in and out of these, the, the stays, um, the hooks, you see hooks that probably hook to a skirt. This is the number we give it. We, we, we do put a number on our items. But look at all the hooks all the way up here that she would have had to hook herself into in order to be able to wear this, wear this small, small top. Very heavy as well, but there's a lot of detail here, but just the hours it would take to get yourself in and how once you were in, you didn't move because the stays kept you real straight, real straight. We also, these each one of these drawers have uh, loaded with different items that she would have carried with her. Um, they're all in acid free paper. I did unwrap a couple items in one of the drawers so you can see. Beautiful purse that she would have had. This was a bonnet, winter, winter bonnet. You put that on. With all this frill in the front, 
a detail, different fabric underneath here, tie under your chin, and still more detail out back here. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful hood for winter time. But this has many, many items in it, many items that we have documented, all clothing. Two little hat. <laughs> This actually came from New York, so that's in good condition. We try to keep everything in acid-free paper. We keep it um, closed up as best we can. Yeah, so this was this was a very nice nice item to have. Everything that is in the drawers came to us that way. And like I said, we're, we do have it all pretty much uh, in acid free, so we don't have to worry about it too, too much. Oh, gotta put this back. So, yeah, so that's it on the top. So, this is a picture of when we took this uh, case to the Kennedy Bunk Savings Bank. Uh, we had a display with a woman in a, wet, a wedding dress that we'd also got from Winifred Pernal Estate. Um, basically depicting how a woman may have traveled with what she would have taken with her and what and uh, on a wedding on a wedding um, trip We got a 1915 calendar from George Ireland's Groceries Provisions Store. He had a store at the corner of Depot Road and State Road. Um, it's called Ireland's Corner there, and that that's where he, he had a store, which was one of several small stores and very uh, profitable. Um, early 1900s. So we have a receipt here from the Georgie Ireland grocery store. It was April 8th, 1911. Um, you can see a broom written there. Um, and uh, so anyways, Looks like oil written there, but it's paid by George E. Ireland. And so we got a couple portraits here of Richard Shapley and Olive Toby Shapley. Just Shapley's a prominent family name in Elliot, and Richard Shapley and Olive were married April 8, 1813. Olive was the daughter of James and Hannah Shapley Toby. Richard was a representative and a sheriff. The couple had 12 children together. Their sixth child, Hannah Toby, married the inventor, famous inventor and Professor Moses G. Fama uh, on December 25th, 1844. So these are just some portraits of some family, some people in the community that uh, the name's still uh, around with a lot of, of people still live in Elliot and a lot of descendants of, of Shapley's. So we have a poster here from a, a field day, the Elliot Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, on Saturday, July 29th, it's written here early uh, 50s or late 40s, the exact year unknown. Um, they had a parade, they had a dry hose contest, a wet hose contest, ladder contest, mystery contest, um, had a ball game. And it was all for free. 